The Northwest uh, 200 is a special race for me. You know, I've been coming. Uh, I think I've lost count. <laughs> I think. Uh, Working out, I think I've been coming 17 years, I never missed a year and uh, you know, I've seen some changes over the circuit, I've seen some changes in the paddock, uh, but still, you know, the, the Irish hospitality is still the same, you know, you, you definitely, you know, when you turn up on, we came on Saturday quite early before even practice started, just for a, just for a couple of days relaxing on the, on the Causeway coast and we've been out on a look round and went for a bite to eat here, then everywhere and had a, we had a fun time before the, we get down to, to, to the business and uh, you know, you get welcomed with open arms as soon as you come into the paddock. It's the usual faces, and uh, you know we've got parked up in the back there. And uh, you know, it just the atmosphere is just fantastic, and uh, it's building up and building up more and more now. And you know, race day tomorrow, I'm getting a bit nervous, and uh, but uh, yeah, we're uh, yeah looking forward to it. And when I mean, you said you'd come over, spend a bit of time, take a look around. When would you bring a bike over, take a bit of a ride around, explore <laughs> the place? I think uh, if if I had a bike, I'd be out there exploring. Now <laughs> I'm a bit of a family man, so I get to do the the real business on the on the 200 mile an hour plus superbikes on the on practice evenings and the race day. So I don't really need a bike, but uh, yeah, I mean when I I think when I retire from racing, I'll come over on a on an old banger or something and uh, have a cruise around the around the coast because I think uh, you know it's a beautiful place. You know, I was I was on the went to Giants Causeway with uh, with the family the other day, and uh, I've been. Been 17 times. I must have been there 10 times as well, but I never get bored of it. You know, just go down there and relax and try and get away from from the racing, the pressures of racing for a few hours. And uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm sure I'll be across on an old old Honda Fireblad in 10 years with a big fat belly and uh, having a look around and a few beers and uh, trying to soak up some of the atmosphere and some of the sights around uh, this uh, Northern Ireland coast. Now we'll go on. Just can you tell me a bit about the bike in terms of what it is? Power, speed, all that sort of business. Yeah. Right. Well, the bike I'm riding is a, is a HM plant Honda CBR 1000 Fireblade. Uh, it's in its third year of development. Uh, fantastic bike. I've ridden the HM plant bike here since 2008, 2009, and this year. So, I feel really familiar with the bike. Uh, yeah, it's not, not not too far away from the superbike spec. It's a bike I used at the TT as well last year. So it's it's got the wide pegs on the big screen. The uh, Got a big fuel tank on it, 24 litre fuel tank, and that's about it really. It's a sort of a basic package that works for us, you know, and uh, we've refined it for the last three years. And uh, you know, it's, whatever you say about anything, it's probably the most reliable package out there as well. You know, it's uh, it's the best hardware, the best tools for the job, and you know, we're on pole position for the race, so no pressure. But <laughs> you're very relaxed, very casual about everything, but you're also the fastest road racer of your generation. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> I don't uh, know about that. No, the well, speeds. So yeah. yeah. So, what is it about the road for you? You know, I, I get asked this question a million, millions of times, you know, and I never have some textbook answer for it. I, I haven't really got an answer for it. I just, you know, when I first came across air racing in uh, 93 and did my first TT in 96 and, you know, they're really the only races I've done. I haven't done any of the, the smaller races over here, but I mean, them two big main races have been, been real good to me and uh, I've really enjoyed them. I've just grown up around it, you know, my dad used to race and uh, I remember going across to the TT in 1982 for the first time to watch like Graham Crosby, Ron Aslan, Joy Dunlop and, uh, you know, Roger Marshall, Mick Grant and all these boys and all massive TT winners of the time and I, I don't know you know when you watch I don't know if you've watched something as a kid but when I watched it it just blew me away I just thought that's a bit of me one day you know I'm going to win one of them and uh, you know here I am with 15 TT wins and it's pretty bizarre really I would, I would have if somebody had said you'd have won 15 I'd probably laughed at it and, and never believed it but uh, you know I mean I've, I've worked hard I it. you know it's not just I haven't had a magic wand given to me you know I've worked hard ridden for different teams and ridden, you know, different bikes and built the experience up and, you know, and uh, now we you know, with the experience I've got on the roads, it, it definitely helps and, uh, you know, we're getting, still getting to ride some brilliant bikes around the, around the Northwestern TT, which, which really helps and, uh, you know, makes my life a little bit easier, but I still have the burning desire to, to ride fast on the roads, you know, and nothing left to prove, but, you know, when you win a race on, on the roads and you stand on the top step and, you know, you're spraying the champagne and you're listening to national anthem, well, I don't think any, anything can beat that, as far as I'm concerned. What about the danger? Again, it's not a question you've been asked a million times. Mm. You've seen mm. friends, other mm. riders, who aren't sadly here anymore. Mm. How do you square that with lining up tomorrow on pole position? And yeah, I, th I mean, I do think about it. You know, I've been racing quite a long time, and you know, 
the odds against it are stacking up a bit. So, but uh, I don't know. I just try and try and be careful. You know, like yesterday the conditions were a little bit iffy, so I didn't really push too far. And if I'm not happy in myself and I'm not feeling confident with it with the bike and the package, I won't try and push the envelope. You know, I'll just try and all I can do is ride as fast as I can ride. Uh, I know my limit, and uh, that's all I can do, and I won't push it over that. And, uh, you know, what will be will be tomorrow on the race, you know, and what will be will be at the TT, you know. I mean, nobody wants to win more than I do. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's hard, you know, it's hard to deal with, and I think it's something that we're hardened to, you know. I mean, I've lost I've lost count how many friends I've lost over the last 15, 20 years uh, racing motorbikes, but uh, we can't help it. It was just some, some sort of inner in the switch that seems to switch us off from it when the flag drops, you know, I mean, obviously I think about it, I thought about Steve yesterday, I seen Steve laid, you know, over the edge of the road and thought the worst, you know, and it really took, knocked the wind out of my sails and nobody wants to see anybody hurt and, uh, you know, it's difficult, but, you know, I seem to be able to deal with it and just get on with it and, uh, again, I don't I really got a good answer for it, but that's, that's just some inner conscience that switches me off and gets me on the bike. Once the lights are out, you know, you're racing, you concentrate on your next apex and, you know, people around you and stuff, and you were just racing, you know, like we normally do. Yeah. Now, on the same same level of racing, one of the other stories we're doing here is about the guys at the back of the grid, the guys who are, you know, they're not making money out of this. In fact, they're probably using the same set of tyres and the yeah. season. They're just getting enough money together to get fuel, running their bikes in on the road. What do you think of those guys? That, you know, this is yeah. a real full-on Irish race. Too right, yeah. I mean, they're the, the grassroots of, uh, of the of the event, you know, and, and I've been there and I've done it, you know, and I first come across in 93, I had an old Iveco van and uh, that's the only thing I had in the world and a TZ 250 and I just rounded up some bits that I could beg and steal and a few old tyres off Dunlop and, you know, that's one of the reasons why I've got a real good relationship with, with Dunlop and a few people in the paddock because I've been there and done it, you know, and my motorhome didn't didn't just arrive one day off Santa Christmas, you know, Father Christmas, I had to work hard for it, you know, and, uh, but, you know, they're there, they're doing it, they're, they're entitled to be there, they've every right to be there, they're making up uh, the grid, and uh, they're really, everybody seems to be enjoying it. There's always oversubscribed with entries for the North West, and uh, long may continue, that's what I see, you know. We're down here in the big big paddock, but, you know, I always I always have a walk about, I know a few of the boys, you know, from uh, who are in the, in the backfield there, and working away, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's good to see, and long may continue.